let's take a ride through the untamed era of the Wild West. Are you ready to embark on a journey filled with danger, treachery, and legendary figures who ruled the lawless lands of the frontier? Hold on to your hats, because today we're delving deep into the heart-pounding realm of the top 20 deadliest outlaws of the Wild West. Number 20. Henry Newton Brown This dude had a pretty wild life, I'll tell ya. He was both a lawman and an outlaw, can you believe it? He actually rode with Billy the Kid's gang, rustling some cattle and all that. But when the kid went back to Mexico, this fella decided to stick around in Texas. He got himself a gig as a deputy sheriff in Oldham County. But guess what? He got fired because he kept picking fights with drunks. So he found another job as an assistant marshal in Caldwell. Now this guy had a reputation for getting things done. He cleaned up that tough town real quick, earning himself the nickname, one of the quickest men on the trigger in the Southwest. But here's the kicker. He couldn't stay on the straight and narrow for very long. He went back to his old outlaw ways and got mixed up in a shootout during a bank robbery. Things didn't turn out too well for him after that. The angry townsfolk had had enough of his shenanigans, so they took matters into their own hands. They formed a mob and decided to lynch him in 1884. Number 19. The Bloody Espinosas Back in 1863, there was a fearsome gang led by brothers Felipe and Jose, along with their cousins. Originally from Veracruz, Mexico, they witnessed the brutal loss of six family members during the Mexican-American War, when their town was bombarded. They also felt wronged by the disregard of their land grant, as more and more white settlers encroached upon their property. Driven to extreme measures, they turned to horse theft and violence targeting the white settlers. However, their spree of criminal activity came to an end when the U.S. Cavalry pursued and ultimately eliminated them. Number 18. William Curly Bill Brocious Let me tell you about this guy called Curly Bill in Cochise County. He was a real wild one, known for his curly hair and his knack for rustling cattle. He was part of a gang of cowboy outlaws in Tombstone, Arizona. Now things got real messy when he accidentally killed Marshal Fred White while working as a tax collector. Surprisingly, he got off the hook thanks to Wyatt Earp's testimony. But hold on to your hat, cause Curly Bill took revenge and shot Wyatt Earp in retaliation for his brother's death. It was a wild ride with a tragic end for old Curly Bill. Number 17. Sam Bass he began his life as an honest individual who escaped from an abusive relative and sought employment at a sawmill in Mississippi. Later, he ventured into the cowboy lifestyle in Texas. In 1876, he partnered with a rugged companion named Joel Collins to drive a herd of Longhorn up north, intending to sell them at higher prices. However, they decided to steal the cattle instead and divided the resulting $8,000 profit amongst themselves, spending it on gambling. Additionally, they engaged in robbing stagecoaches and trains, culminating in the Union Pacific's gold train heist, which yielded $60,000, marking the largest robbery of its kind. During one of their criminal endeavors, Bass sustained injuries inflicted by a Texas Ranger and tragically passed away two days later, coinciding with his 27th birthday. Number 16. James Averill James Averill was accused of being a cattle thief and unfairly executed alongside Cattle Kate Wilson by a group of powerful cattle ranchers. This event became one of the many factors that led to the Johnson County War. Averill had a military background and was initially stationed at Fort Douglas, Utah, and later at Fort McKinley, Wyoming, near Buffalo. While in Buffalo, he fatally shot a man but no charges were brought against him. He eventually became a landowner and resisted the control of the influential cattle baron, Albert J. Bothwell. As the conflict dragged on for months, he and Cattle Kate were labeled as outlaws and ultimately killed. Number 15. Thomas Coleman Younger 
After his father was murdered, Thomas Coleman Younger transformed from an American Confederate guerrilla into an outlaw and joined the infamous James Younger Gang, alongside his younger siblings Jim, John, and Bob, as well as Jesse and Frank James. Following his involvement in the Confederate Army, he came under suspicion for the 1868 robbery of Nimrod Long & Company in Kentucky. In addition to targeting banks, the gang also committed robberies on stagecoaches and trains. However, their streak of success came to an end during a failed bank robbery on September 7, 1876. To avoid facing the death penalty, he and his brothers pleaded guilty and were subsequently granted parole. Number 14. Zip Wyatt Zip, also known as Nathaniel Ellsworth Wyatt, had various aliases such as Wild Charlie and Dick Yeager. He gained infamy as one of the most notorious outlaws in the territory of Oklahoma. He was the second child among seven boys and one girl. The family frequently moved around before eventually settling down about 14 miles northeast of Guthrie, Oklahoma in 1889. Zip's father, nicknamed Old Six-Shooter Bill, often faced arrests for drunkenness and disorderly conduct, while his older brother Nim, a professional gambler, was known as Six-Shooter Jack. Zip's outlaw life began on June 3, 1891, when he caused chaos in the town of Mulhall by firing shots and injuring two residents. While evading capture, he engaged in various criminal activities, including multiple robberies and other offenses. Number 13. James Miller James Brown Miller, also known as Killin' Jim, was a famous outlaw and gunfighter in the American Old West. They called him Deacon Jim because he regularly attended church and stayed away from vices like smoking and drinking. Unfortunately, he met a grim end in Ada, Oklahoma in 1909. A furious mob lynched him, along with three others, because he had assassinated a former deputy U.S. Marshal. It turns out Miller was a hired killer, charging anywhere from $150 to $2,000 for his deadly services. He would ambush his targets at night while dressed in a black frock coat to stay hidden. He was even credited with taking down 12 people in gunfights. However, his reputation caught up with him, and enraged citizens took matters into their own hands. Number 12. Bonnie and Clyde If we're talking about outlaws who lived fast and died young, Bonnie Elizabeth Parker and Clyde Champion Barrow are the real deal. Just like in the 1967 film, Bonnie and Clyde. They formed the Barrow Gang, along with Clyde's brother Buck and his sister-in-law Blanche, and went on a spree of robberies and killings across Texas, Missouri, Louisiana, and Oklahoma. Bonnie and Clyde were American criminals who roamed around the central U.S. with their gang during the tough times of the Great Depression. They were infamous for their bank robberies, though they often targeted small stores or rural funeral homes. The media and the public were captivated by their escapades during the, quote, public enemy era between 1931 and 1934. Eventually, they were ambushed by the police and fatally shot in Louisiana. It's believed that they killed at least nine police officers and four civilians. Number 11. Wild Bill Hickok James Butler Hickok, also known as Wild Bill, was a legendary figure in the American Old West. He lived a thrilling life as a soldier, scout, lawman, cattle rustler, gunslinger, gambler, showman, and actor, and was involved in numerous famous gunfights. While some of the stories he told on himself were exaggerated or made up, they contributed to his fame during his time. Hickok was born and raised on an Illinois farm where lawlessness was prevalent due to groups like the Banditti of the Prairie. Drawn to this rough lifestyle, he fled west at 18, working as a stagecoach driver and later becoming a lawman in Kansas and Nebraska. During the Civil War, he fought and spied for the Union Army, gaining further attention as a scout, sharpshooter, actor, and professional gambler after the war. He was involved in several notable shootouts throughout his life. In 1876, while playing poker in a saloon in Deadwood, Dakota Territory, 
now South Dakota, Hickok was shot and killed by Jack McCall, a failed gambler. The hand of cards he supposedly held at the time of his death, Black Aces and Eights, became known as the Dead Man's Hand. Number 10. Fred Waite A Chickasaw cowboy, he initially joined Billy the Kid's gang, known as the Regulators, but eventually left to return to his own people. During his time as a gunfighter for the gang, he was responsible for the deaths of several individuals, including multiple sheriffs. Around the age of 27 in 1880, Waite decided to leave the gang and went back to the Chickasaw Nation in search of a more settled life. He got married, became a rancher, and started a family. From then on, he lived a law-abiding life and actively participated in Choctaw and Chickasaw politics. He achieved elected positions in the Chickasaw Legislature as both a representative and a senator. During his time as a representative, he served as Speaker of the House for three sessions. Additionally, he was appointed as Attorney General of the Chickasaw Nation by the Council in Chief. Unfortunately, he passed away at the age of 42 due to complications from rheumatism. Number 9. The Sundance Kid the Sundance Kid, whose real name was Harry Longabaugh, or Longbaugh, was a renowned American outlaw. He gained fame as the best shot and fastest gunslinger of the Wild Bunch, a notorious group of robbers and rustlers active in the Rocky Mountains and desert regions of the West during the late 1800s. The Wild Bunch was infamous for their string of successful train and bank robberies, establishing a reputation in history. Longabaugh earned his nickname after being imprisoned in the town of Sundance for stealing a horse. Following his release, he found his way to the hideout known as the Hole in the Wall in Wyoming, launching his outlaw career. Eventually, he partnered with Robert Leroy Parker, better known as Butch Cassidy, forming a formidable gang. While it was widely believed that Sundance Kid met his end in a shootout in Bolivia, his family members disputed this account, creating an air of mystery around his fate. Number 8. Pearl Hart Hart, originally named Pearl Taylor, grew up in the Canadian village of Lindsay, Ontario. Her parents were well-off and religious, which allowed her to receive a good education. When she was 16, she attended a boarding school where she developed a crush on a guy named Hart who was known for being a bit of a troublemaker, drinker, and gambler. Her stint as a stagecoach robber didn't last long. After her abusive husband left her to fight in the Spanish-American War, she fell in with the wrong crowd. She teamed up with a gambler named Joe Boot to plan a robbery, hoping to get back to her dying mother in Canada. Unfortunately, they got caught and ended up in prison. She managed to charm her way out once, but got recaptured and ended up serving only two years out of a five-year sentence in a male prison. Eventually, the governor pardoned her upon discovering that she was pregnant. Number 7. Butch Cassidy Born in 1866 as Robert Leroy Parker in Circleville, Utah, Butch Cassidy grew up in poverty as one of 13 children. He learned the tricks of the trade from a cattle rustler named Mike Cassidy, helping him make a living through less than honest means. In 1889, Cassidy and three others committed their first recorded crime, a bank robbery in Telluride, Colorado, taking off with $20,000. Adopting the name Butch, he formed the Wild Bunch Gang in Wyoming, including the Sundance Kid. After a stint in prison for horse theft, Cassidy's gang robbed a bank in Montpelier, Idaho in 1896, getting away with $7,000. They carried out several more robberies, including a notable $70,000 haul from a Rio Grande train robbery in New Mexico. With law enforcement closing in, Cassidy and the Sundance Kid fled to Argentina. Some believe they met their end in a shootout in Bolivia while others speculate they escaped and lived under new identities. Number 6. Bell Star Born into a Confederate sympathizing family, Myra Maybell Shirley Starr, later known as Bell Star, had a fascinating life as an outlaw. In her teenage years, outlaws like Jesse James used her family's home as a hideout. Over the years, she married three outlaws, including Jim Reed and Sam Starr. 
Bellstar faced legal troubles, serving time for horse stealing and being charged again in 1886. However, her legal skills helped her to get acquitted. Unfortunately, her husband and an Indian policeman died in a shootout. Tragically, Bell Starr was murdered near her Oklahoma cabin in 1889 at the age of 40. The crime remains unsolved, with some suspecting her son as the culprit. Despite her notorious reputation, Glenn Shirley, a writer on the subject, claimed that the only truth in the reports surrounding her death was that she had indeed passed away. Number 5. Geronimo Geronimo, a prominent leader of the Bedenko Apache, was also known by his Chiricahua names such as Goyatle or Goyakla, meaning one who yawns. In 1858, a devastating attack by Mexican soldiers resulted in the death of his mother, wife, and three children. This event transformed Geronimo into a fierce warrior, joining the Chiricahua in numerous raids across the U.S. border and northern Mexico. Geronimo is renowned for his unwavering resistance against anyone, be it Mexican or American, who tried to remove his people from their ancestral lands. Geronimo skillfully evaded capture and resisted life on a reservation, even prompting a significant pursuit by a quarter of the U.S. standing army during his final escape. However, he was eventually captured on September 4, 1886 making him the last Native American leader to formally surrender to the U.S. military. The remainder of Geronimo's life, which spanned 23 years, was spent as a prisoner of war. Number 4. The Apache Kid The Apache Kid, also known as Haske Bay Ne Tiao, had a fascinating life as a White Mountain Apache scout turned renegade in the late 19th and possibly early 20th centuries. Starting off as a scout to combat raiding Apache bands and assist settlers, he eventually became an infamous outlaw in Arizona, New Mexico, and parts of Mexico. The character of Apache Kid in Marvel Comics was named after him, although their stories are unrelated. While his exact birth date is uncertain, it's believed to be in the 1860s. While most accounts state that he died in 1894, there are claims from some New Mexico cattle ranchers that he lived on until the 1930s, adding an air of mystery to his fate. Number 3. John Wesley Hardin Known by the name of the Methodist church founder, this American Old West outlaw, gunfighter, and controversial figure became a prominent character of folklore. Hardin found himself in trouble with the law from a young age, and he claimed to have acted in self-defense when he killed his first man at just 15 years old. Law enforcement pursued Hardin throughout his life, and when he was 23, he received a 24-year prison sentence for murder. He boasted of having killed 42 men, though newspaper reports attributed 27 deaths to him. While behind bars, Hardin took an interest in studying law and penned an autobiography. However, it's well known that he often embellished or invented stories about his life, taking credit for killings that lacked supporting evidence. Just a year after his release from prison in 1894, Hardin met his demise at the hands of John Selman in a saloon in El Paso. Number 2. Jesse James Jesse James, born in Missouri in 1847, came from a family that supported the Confederacy and owned slaves. As a teenager in 1864, he and his brother Frank joined a guerrilla group that killed many Union soldiers. For some historians, Jesse James never let go of the Civil War, channeling his anger over the secessionist cause's defeat into a career of robbing banks, trains, and stagecoaches. He sometimes saw himself as a modern-day Robin Hood, targeting Reconstruction supporters and giving to the less fortunate. According to the State Historical Society of Missouri, the James Younger Gang operated across a wide range of states, from Iowa to Texas to West Virginia. From 1860 to 1882, they allegedly committed over 20 bank and train robberies, amassing a total haul at an estimated $200,000. While their primary focus was on robbing train safes rather than individual passengers, they didn't hesitate to ruthlessly kill anyone who stood in their way. Number 1. Billy the Kid 
Billy the Kid, the notorious Wild West outlaw, had quite a reputation. According to legend, he supposedly took out 21 people before he even hit 21 years old, which is when he met his end. However, it's likely that the actual number of killings is closer to around 9. The early days of Henry McCarty, also known as William Bonney or The Kid, remain shrouded in mystery. Billy was believed to have been born in New York in 1859, but his family moved around quite a bit before settling in Santa Fe, New Mexico. Unfortunately, he was orphaned after his mother passed away from tuberculosis when he was a teenager. Separated from his brother, Billy ended up in foster homes and quickly got involved in petty theft. In 1875, he even pulled off a daring escape from jail by climbing up the chimney after being caught stealing clothes from a Chinese laundry. He eventually made his way to Southeast Arizona. In Arizona, Billy joined a horse stealing gang in 1876. The following year, he found himself charged with murder and had to flee back to New Mexico, where he joined another group of thieves. In 1878, he became part of a posse called the Regulators, seeking revenge for a cattleman's murder during the infamous Lincoln County War. By 1880, Billy the Kid's name was making headlines in the tabloid newspapers. According to Markley, quote, Billy became the symbol of the American loner, the little guy fighting against all odds, the misunderstood youth who battled the combined corrupt government and business forces hell-bent on his destruction. Everyone wanted to be associated with Billy the Kid, whether he stayed at their ranch or he stole one of their horses, end quote. With a tempting $500 reward on his head, Billy's luck eventually ran out. New Mexico Sheriff Pat Garrett gunned him down on July 14, 1881, bringing an end to the infamous outlaw's escapades. And there you have it, folks, the top 20 deadliest outlaws of the Wild West. These notorious figures left their mark on history with their daring exploits, deadly gunfights, and relentless pursuit of freedom. All right, that's it for us today. Thank you for watching. See you in the next video.